Hi guys, today we're going to talk about effective and ineffective visuals with visual rhetoric and actually movie posters and like video box art, DVD box art. Now, I'm going to talk about what would characterize an effective visual piece of rhetoric and maybe some ineffective visual piece of rhetoric. So, effective visual rhetorics are complex and multifaceted. And what we mean by that is that it appeals to many different things at many different levels. It communicates a message clearly uses rhetorical strategies, you know, the ones related to pathos, ethos, and logos. And remember, when you write about this, don't say pathos, ethos, and logos. This is a, those are categories for you to understand. You sound pretentious when you use them in writing. And they are visually interesting. They can be controversial, thought-provoking, appealing, etc. And they often utilize a tagline to set up what's going on or some other small bits of text, but small bits of text. Ineffective visuals fail to communicate anything but something superficial. Do not provoke analysis or discussion. Are these posters from um, TV, uh, movies from the last decade, or actually the last two decades, effective, and why? So this is a poster for The Butler. Now, since you got in the top screen, you see Inspired by a True Story. You see One Voice Can Ignite a Revolution. All right. And then you have an unassuming butler framed as a political figure with his hand raised um, in a workers' power, black power salute. All right. So we have a historical illusion there. We have very subtle silhouettes. And we have him holding the White House on a platter. All right. So this is inspired by a true works. So that's a kind of logos appeal. It's an appeal that gives you credibility. It's also an ethos appeal, right? So you got that. The tagline, one quiet voice can't ignite a revolution. Since a strong uh, message that the movie's about more than a butler, you see the term revolution. The, the raised fist is a sign of revolution and uprising. Ethos uprising uh, in the mid 20th century for equal rights. We now associate that fist with the black power. Although if you actually study the history of that fist, that fist has been associated with um, socialism and workers' revolutions going all the way back to the 1890s. Um, it is a signal of strength, but it is different from, say, the open salute. Um, the open salute is generally associated with the Roman Empire and with fascism. So we also know that this has a vaguely left-wing message, right? Um, we use black and white to create a stark contrast. Um, it could also represent racial components to which the movie is dealing with, you know. Um, the tensions between black and white. The White House is on a platter represents the obvious, but could also represent serving up equality for the first time. And note that the only color in the entire poster is the American flag. All right. This is a pretty effective visual. It conveys a whole lot very subtly. It has all the kinds of appeals, uh, emotional, um, logical, and... Eth, um, and credibility are, you know, so logos, pathos, and ESO, so all are dressed. Um, it has a pretty good tagline. It doesn't tell you what exactly is going to happen. You don't know the plot of the movie from this, but you do know that you're supposed to interpret the plot of a movie as larger than just the butler himself, and you know that the, the makers of the film consider this of historical importance. Um, and you know that it's about something quintessential to be an American because the flag, while it is small and innocuous, is the only thing in color in the poster. Now, that is how you do a visual analysis on an effective movie poster. What about this? Memoirs of a Geisha. You have uh, a geisha painted Asian women with blue eyes. Do you know anything about this movie from this um, image at all? What do you know? Do you consider it effective? Is it alluring to you? Is it just visually appealing? All right. What's the point of emphasizing the paleness and the red lips? Why give the the model blue eyes, which she had historically had it? What would that be about? What about this? Um, um, Gangs of New York. Here we have um, an old American flag tattered with the three main characters, you can tell um, that 
you're looking at the characters dressed probably 19th century, but you don't know 100% for sure. But you hear the tagline, America was born in the streets. And then you notice, if you look at the tatter flag closely, the tattering of the flag actually resembles the modern New York skyline. So what are you supposed to learn about this movie? Do you find it effective? All right. Good night and good luck. We have the author. We have something that looks like the American flag, but it's off color on both presentations. In the top, you have straps in black and white, which can invoke either the flag or prison. And in the bottom, you have the American flag invoked, but instead of it being red, white, and blue, you have it as in black and red. Um, you have a figure... Um, in black and white, which invokes the time period this movie is probably supposed to be taking place in. And we have in red, which is the only other thing, um, we will not walk in fear of one another. And you see here that the movie is in black, white, and red. That are the only colors in the poster. All right, do you find this effective and ineffective, and why? What kind of appeals is it making? Why invoke black, white, and red? All right, what about this one by Anthony... Um, you see, this is Titus Andronicus, or Titus, this is a movie by Julie Taymor. And all you see is Anthony Hopkins, the actor, in his Roman garb, but completely painted in blue in a strange way. Is this appealing to you? Is it fascinating? What kind of appeals is it making? Right, there's no tagline. Um, and then this recent-ish movie is from 2017. Dunkirk, can you see a, a small little soldier facing this massive battle on the beaches, um, looking out into the beach far away. You have the blue and gray colors with just hints of fire everywhere. And while you can kind of see the warships, they're not actually clear in the picture. They are presented in shadow and in hints and blur. Um, this is called The Event That Shaped Our World. And it's, it's in a simple color palette um, with the individual small soldier taking off his helmet and looking at all this chaos um, enlarged in the center probably larger than he should be against the backdrop of these massive warships all right is that effective does it interest you what does it communicate all right and what about this one is this effective all you have is a date and x all right as a side note this is a ad for the movie malcolm x which i believe came out in the late 80s early 90s starring the cell Washington, but you know none of that. There's no tagline. You just have X and a date. Does this interest you? Would this be effective? Would this work now? Um, is this effective visual rhetoric? All right, and um, I want you to think about these and maybe do a little bit of practice because this will be your base... Um, this was what will base your major um, essay analysis for this on this um, unit on. Sorry, I tripped up a little bit there. All right, you guys have a good day, and I hope you learned something about effective visual rhetoric with movie advertising.